Hey, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. On today's episode of The Art of Repair, we're going to be going over residual underfill removal from Apple PCBs. Now, something very important to note here is that different underfill for different brands and different devices is generally pretty different. So make sure that you're paying attention to the underfill type that is being removed or you could end up having a real bad time. What we're doing today is specifically for Apple devices and the underfill that they use. Let's head on over to the microscope and check it out. All right, so you guys might remember this board. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, this is the one that we used during, I think, uh, it may have been episode 13 where we did the, the NAND removal and the underfill perforation so that you didn't pull out the adjacent components. And we're going to go ahead and remove all the residual underfill now so that we can prepare it for a new NAND chip. So... We're going to be using one of my favorite tools today. Um, as my employee likes to call it, it's Old Faithful. It's a number 10 X-Acto blade with a curved tip. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this is a brand new blade. I don't ever use brand new blades with this stuff. I just, you know, it must be a common trend. I left it at work. So we're going to use a new one today, so we're guaranteed to get some laughs because I'm definitely going to mess something up. Um, I mean, yeah. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's go ahead and make sure we're in focus. You can see that we have it all the way up and all the way around here. I always try and work from right to left on the top end here. That way I'm not kind of going all over the place and you know moving my arms and doing all kind of weird techniques. If you just get used to doing it one way, you can flip the work piece over and you're gonna get more consistent results. You accidentally rip a pad off, you know, you might be just out of luck. You know, it may not be something that you can jump. So, you know, it's always better to be more careful than sorry here. Um, obviously, the first step is to remove the residual solder here, which was already done. And yeah, let's just, just jump on in there and do this. It's really, I'm gonna be honest, this isn't really too terribly complicated. It's not like there's a ton that needs to go into doing this. It's really just following along and making sure that you're careful. Uh, we're gonna be using a lot lower temperature this time. Um, last time we used 320. This time we're actually gonna go ahead and use probably around like, I don't know, 220, 230. Um, we just want it to just start entering the crumble stage. So let's jump in there. All right, so you can see all these lines going all the way around. They're pretty much the shape of the chip. We want to make sure we get rid of those for sure. All this stuff needs to go. We don't want anything to be in the way of putting this chip on correctly. Actually, maybe we zoom in closer. I kind of want you guys to see when I first start making entry into it. All right. Now you can see here if you if you kind of go across the top that there's a lift to it. See that? I'm barely touching it. And it's coming up, okay? That's our starting point. We don't want to just start dragging across there and do anything crazy now. Getting up the area. I am not putting any pressure on the actual board right now. And this blade is super sharp, so I'm kind of concerned right now. Yeah, this thing is super sharp. Crud. I definitely recommend not doing this with any sort of brand new blade. We're going to have to be extra careful today. But you see how easy it's coming up. I mean, it just shoo, peels right up, no problem. So now that you see what's going on, let's zoom back a little bit and kind of get a bigger picture here. Let's keep working. So I'm going to work across the top first here. This is usually my method. Oh, man, that is just sharp oh man scary all 
little solder ball there. Now, you see how clean this is getting. But what you don't see is that I'm not going, I'm definitely not going over here. You won't see that, okay? Don't go out of your way to do some crazy stuff. Be just nice and gentle with it and let it work for you and don't don't try and be doing crazy things to make you know it work in its place. So we're gonna move over now, get a little bit over here. See how I'm doing that. Always moving right to left, right to left. I am putting zero pressure into the blade. I am not pushing in. I am not trying to slice my way under it. Uh, especially with this brand new blade, as long as you're applying the correct heat, it is just going to slice right out. It's not a big deal. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Now, I can see right here, when I originally did this, I did pull up a little bit of the conformal coating and the solder mask. So I'm gonna try and be extra gentle right here. Um, if I can find an overcoat pin, then we'll go ahead and overcoat it whenever I'm done. If not, you know, that'll probably be a whole nother video on its own about overcoat. All right. So this is right about where I'm probably going to flip the device. Just because at this point, I feel like I really want to do something crazy, like, you know, kind of come around and do something, something ridiculous that I shouldn't be doing. So I'm going to do something real simple here. I'm working smarter, not harder. I'm just gonna flip it, okay? All right. So let's get back to work. No pressure. I'm just letting it do its thing. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, this might actually be better to do with a sharper blade if you're more careful. You see how easy that's coming up. Man, we are filleting this bad boy. You know what? I think I'm going to eat my words a little bit here. I kind of think I like this brand new blade. I feel like it is just doing a superb job. So, what time is it? Flip time. And we are actually almost done. This thing never, ever stays in focus right. I feel like if I don't super glue it, It's all right. So let's continue once again. It's almost like I'm resting 
the blade itself just by its tip down here and I'm just slightly moving forward I'm guiding it in the direction that I want it to go With the new blade, it's almost kind of too fun. I almost want to just take like four or five of these things out and do it. It's very satisfying. But then again, I love what I do more than anything. So pretty much everything that I do is super fun and satisfying whenever it turns out right. Which is, I guess, why I do what I do. Geez, I wish this would stay in focus. You'll have to excuse me for just a minute. I've got to fix this or I'm going to lose my wand. How is it? Close enough? I'm good. All right. Jump back in there. Make sure you don't get too excited doing this or you might dig down on the board. I'm going to tell you right now, I am being so gentle. I mean, it's it wants to come off, I'll tell you that. I mean... I'm getting layer after layer on layers that I've already scooped up, so. You know, I've seen a lot of people that'll that'll superheat the area and you know they'll they'll put solder balls all over the pads and you know they'll they'll be scraping right through it and doing all kind of crazy stuff and you know that stuff scares me. When I see that I'm like, man, what are you doing? You need to calm down. Calm down with that. Oh, by the way, we are pretty much on the last step here. So, and it, I'm gonna tell you right now, it, from my point of view, this thing is looking fantastic. You know, you know, there's that big difference between seeing something in the microscope and seeing it where you know all the details have come together to be the item that it is. And I'm gonna tell you from from my point of view, it is looking nice. All right, let's get this last little bit. You know, like I said, today's video is. Nothing crazy or anything, but this is this is something that a lot of people ask me about. Believe it. Like, you know, I'm... Oh, that is so satisfying. Be really, really careful if if you're doing this inside the the BGA array, make sure you are extra careful that you don't accidentally slice under one of these pads. These pads are held in with a special type of adhesive and it's very easy to get under them and pull them up, hence why people pull pads. So you know, don't let that be you. But that's also why I like the number 10 blade. It's really broad and easy to just kind of get around things with. 
because there's been times while I'm doing this here that I start seeing a little bit of solder is also sliced off. So that tells me that this blade is definitely capable of just taking one of them pads out. I almost just want to keep doing this. This is too fun. Like, I'm loving it. Man. Well, that, that was over too quick almost. Um, yeah, let's, let's wipe it down and check it out and see what the deal is here. And See, I just unscrewed that PCB holder thing and it shot my little screw out, so... The best from best tools quality control. But I think we all know better than that, don't we? All right, let's take a look at this thing. What is going on? If anybody can tell me why I'm getting such glare off this, you know, it's it would be much appreciated. And I, I have a feeling that it's some kind of issue with my setup here not being straight or something but whatever I feel like what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna take a nice high resolution picture of this and put it here so you guys can see it because I really want you guys to see the quality of this it's so nice that was a much that was much easier to do with the the sharp blade than I thought I I was actually kind of kind of kind of worried a little bit. I was like, man, I've been doing this with the uh, the dull blade for so long and it works so well. I'm going to get home and I'm going to end up goofing up and, you know, messing the whole thing up by using a sharp blade, but much better, much better. I totally, totally liked it. So, anyway, let's clean it off here, I guess, and I don't really feel like we need to clean much of anything off. It was pretty thorough in slicing that stuff off. one little spot maybe that's maybe that's why I cleaned it off make sure everything's good you know what I bet I'm gonna zoom in real tight here there we go so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way around it I'm gonna let you guys take a look here and you guys can see the work yourself so we are starting in the top left corner and you can see that I got all that stuff out from the top it's nice and flat and flush ooh look at that. that's where I first started I was sketched out I'll tell you that I was like ooh I hope this sharp blade doesn't do me in is that something right there yeah let's get that real quick and like I said to do a perfect job you just gotta make sure it's done right I mean you know, that can mean doing it more than once or going in and you know taking the time to to deal with the small details and this is one of those small details double checking your work Right. Woo, what was that? There's my my goof up point right there. And like I said, you can always take an overcoat pin for something like that and uh, and kind of fill it in. Good, looking good. Looking good. Oh, I think we did it, guys. I think I didn't goof up this time. Nice. Well, hey, like I said, make sure that you're checking the brand and make sure that you're checking the underfill type that's going in there. Um, 
you know, I've seen everything from clear epoxies to this dark stuff. I've seen some weird, nasty brown stuff that didn't come up. I mean, there's quite a bit different types of underfill out there. So doing your research and making sure that you know what you're dealing with and at least having a donor board that you can practice on before you do something like this is definitely going to be, you know, a big deal and it's going to help you out a lot. So um, just to recap, we did use a very low temperature today versus what we used the first time around. I did 220 degrees at half airflow and I used a four millimeter tip but again I mean you can use whatever I mean you know it's kind of like one of those things where different variations can end up doing the exact same thing as other variations depending on how you have your stuff set up um, but yeah the blade awesome right number 10 blade that's the one and I'm going to be real, the number 10 blade is a very versatile blade. I use it a lot for for Galaxy Refurb when I'm trying to get under glass. Um, there's a lot of different uses for it just because it's got that that uh, that curved blade there. It displaces whatever you're doing so well most of the time at these, at these levels that, you know, using that over like a sharp blade, you're never going to go back to like a pointy blade. I swear, you're going to love it. You're going to want it. You're going to buy a whole bunch of them and you're going to have them on recurring delivery. They're so awesome. But then again, I've had the same one blade for like the last two years. So, yep. Anyway, I uh, hope you learned something. And remember, my name's Justin, and this is the Art of Repair.